pretty interesting. This uh, this exclusive is pretty interesting to everybody. So right now, what's good, everybody? This is Mikey T, the movie star, Report Card Radio. Take a second to like and subscribe to the page if you're not or if you're not already. We're gonna get right back in where we started, which was when the the special agent and the task force officer revealed that Dark Low had told them that he was actually the one who introduced Taz to OVH. And that's actually why in the headline it's Dark Low admitted to introducing Taz to OVH. But today we're going to take a look actually at the relationship that Dark Low had with Taz. I think we're going to be able to read into a little bit more of that. So I forgot this, Will. He mentioned in the car, if you want to talk about it again, mm -hmm, that uh, basically Low told me was that he pretty much was the one who introduced Taz to these guys. Yeah, Dark Low says. So that, you know, he, he's a Frankfurt guy who's really, he had no connection to them, the task force officer replied. Mm-hmm, right? And that, that's a fact, Dark Low says. Taz is in with these guys who actually threw him so he felt like like he was kind of betraying him to, uh, and then Dark Low comes in quickly. That's a fact. Dark Low was feeling betrayed by having brought Taz into the, into the group. Uh, as Dark Low stated earlier, he, uh, Taz was around when Dark Low would be around ARAB, which was pretty much every day, every other day, until he got sick. So you said, uh, you had also mentioned you were talking to him about not going around. What, when you weren't there also? Yeah, I told him, you know, don't, don't, because he used to hang with my little brother and my little cousin. I used to have him on my block on Darien Street. Now the special agent hits low with a, mm-hmm. So in 2010, Dark Low says, this is labeled TFO, but I want to say this is Dark Low. So... In 2010, when he first came home till, uh, I think he came in 2010, he was homeless, but I knew him from jail, from Hootsdale, so I took him under my wing, let him come, and he just started being around every single day. He's like my little brother. Do anything, I say, he, he's hanging with my little brother, my little cousin, so I took him in as one of mine, so I let him meet Ab. Well, I didn't let him meet Ab. He was with me when I used to be with Ab. He just started coming on his own when I got sick with the dialysis. This was a full-blown thing down here. I didn't even know he was down there like I, like that. So I told him, don't be down there like that. You don't know them dudes. Um, Do you have any tattoos? Yeah, I got a couple of them. So we got a blacked out part here, which I see one of the comments says that these blacked out marks are actually redacted statements. So it doesn't seem like this blackout mark is going to be a, a picture of Dark Lowe's tattoos. What did you mean when you said, don't be a tough rat, just humble down? Yeah, and be a good rat like Ace. Mm-hmm. Don't be walking around with your face screwed up like you're tough. You're a rat. Just humble down. Be humble and do your time. Don't be no tough rat like like you're tough. Be like Ace Boogie. You ain't seen Peyton Fold before? Nah. Yeah? It's, uh, I, I didn't get the reference, the special agent says. Ace is in the movie and he was, he was a rat, but he wasn't tough. He was just calm. He wasn't no tough rat. Gotcha. And where are your tattoos? The task force officer comes back. I'm sorry. Hand, arm, arm, back, chest. The the last sentence here, the South Philly Bulls don't play that rat. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't want you to get stabbed up and start bleeding their names out. Who bleed that the names? Mm-hmm. What does C D F U mean? Cracking the F up? F up? Where's soak? Soak in misery? Mm-hmm. What do you mean bleeding the names out? No, like stab or red? You're going to start bleeding? That's uh, you bleeding red when you're going to bleed in. Gotcha. So Dark Low comes back in. It was just all, it wasn't no threats. I don't see how that's threats. If I didn't know him, that's threats. If I didn't know him or if he was just on the case, that's threats. But he was under me, so I feel as though I could. I could say that to him. Yeah, the task force officer responds. I feel as though I could say shit like that to him, man. Do you see how somehow I definitely can, definitely can. All right, all right. But I don't see how somebody can say I threatened him. 
it was a threat because I, I never threatened him. I said, I don't want you to get sniped. Them South Philly Bulls don't play that. They don't play that anywhere. Frankfurt, whoever, they don't play that. Somebody just got stabbed up for telling it, and I still got, I'm trying to get out my heart. It's, it's hard for me to get the love out of my heart for him. But I'm telling him to be careful, bro. You got OBH on your neck. You got my name on your arm. You got ab name on your, like, be careful, bro. That's what I'm telling him. Okay. Do we really? No. If the, no. I think this is more important, the task force officer says, and the special agent agrees. Yes. Issues, right? Yeah. I, so I guess you know they're going to warrant your house, the special agent says. Mm-hmm. And they got the gun. Mm-hmm. I guess an extended clip, the mag and all that. Yeah. That's all yours? Yeah. That was mine's. Yeah. So right here, Dark Low admits to uh, possession of the ratchet, as a lot of you guys are saying. And a lot of people are coming at him for admitting to possessing the firearm here. But you got to just take into consideration, you don't know who else was living in Dark Low's household. You don't know if his girl was there. You don't know if his one of his brothers was living there. You don't know if his cousin was living there. So he doesn't want the blame of this firearm to fall on anybody else. So honestly, him taking the charge right here is is manning up. So anybody who's going to say anything about that just realize the, the guy manned up so nobody else would fall victim to this. So I guess an extended clip, the mag and all that. Yeah, that's all yours. Yeah, that was all mine's. Yeah. OK, I just got what did you have that for just to protect yourself? The special agent cut low off. Yeah, protect myself. I always, bro, that I don't carry it. I don't know why it's just in my house. It's up in my closet. I, I don't do nothing with it. I don't go out with it or nothing. You just want protection. Yeah, just protection for my house. Yeah, I was kind of explaining to you, though, that the only problem you're going to have is I'm a felon. You were a convicted felon, and you're not supposed to have, like, like I told him, a firearm. Well, what? What were your charges? Because all that could make a difference. Like, what felony conviction do you have? Um, was it a drug charge or was it an assault charge or something like that? What What I went upstate for was, um, well, it was a gun charge, but they didn't. My baby mom was mad. She said I took her gun. They never found no gun or nothing throughout the whole trial. But she said I took them on some real, I, don't, I didn't take them. And she wrote a letter apologizing, saying she lied, but they still sent, still sent me upstate. Was it, were you charged with theft then? Theft, yeah. Of the firearm? Yeah, yep. So it could have been, did you have a prior felony before that? Yeah, I had, um, I think, a drug charge way back in like 01, 02. This happened in 05 when I got, when I got caught with the theft charge. But before any that, my first charge was in 01 with the drug charges. But you, you were found guilty or you pled guilty? I, um, I pled. I think I pled. Yeah, I pled guilty. I was going to ask for it if you pled or... So you pled guilty to a drug charge. Mm-hmm. That's definitely how... I, I never went to trial. Okay, and the theft, the theft charge, did they charge you with the VUFA? VUFA for a former convict? No. At the time for possessing a gun? No, they didn't charge me. So it was just theft of a firearm. Mm-hmm. Stealing a firearm. Yeah. But it was a misdemeanor or a felony or that charge. Do you remember? Honestly, man, I don't. I was so ignorant, I don't even remember. Well, it's almost 15 years ago, so yeah. I know it might not be that. I don't even know. Easy. Okay. When was the last time you were arrested? That time right there. Those are the only two that you remember? Well, a while back in 01, I was catching petty drug cases, selling little packs in 01, 02. I was catching little back-to-back -back cases in 04. That was my, that was like my only major case I had was that one. That theft? Yeah. Okay. How much time did you do upstate? I did, um, I got sentenced to two and a half to five. I did three and a half and came home on parole. Where'd you go? Graterford? Yeah. No, I went, yeah, Graterford, Camp Hill and Hootsdale. All three on the same charge? They kept moving you around? Nah, first I got registered in Graterford, stayed there for a month, and went to Hootsdale for like three months. I mean, went to Camp Hill for like three months, then went to Hootsdale. Okay. And that's where you met Taz.
Taz, Taz, yeah. He was, that was my, he was under me every day in Hootsdale. All day, every day. So he, you say he, you run Darien Street? Mm-hmm. Like hustling, you kind of took him under, mm-hmm. Under your wing a little bit? Mm-hmm, all the way. What was he doing for you? Selling my packs? Yeah. Just, uh, was he like a caseworker for you? Um, I wasn't really no caseworker. It was just like, you sell this, you make some money. I ain't, he just wasn't working like, like that. I, I was just, I got you, right. Just on the block, Dark Low said. So you said you were the one that kind of introduced him to, uh, yeah, I didn't really. OBH and the guys in it? Yeah, yeah, I definitely was the one, but I didn't introduce him like it was Taz. Like it was Taz. He was just around, and he started coming, and then Ab started seeing him. You know how it goes. And then he just start, yeah, have their own little thing. But when I got sick, I specifically told him, don't be down there no more. Don't be down there like that. Okay. So he was down there like he got caught up, man. So what do you know about like the stuff he's going to talk about today in court? Everything. Unfortunately, you missed the fireworks. I know everything about he, what he was talking about. I know everything. So did you tell him the truth? So did you tell him the truth? Depending. I don't know what he, I mean, I don't know what he was saying because I wasn't in. Well, they told me a little bit of what he was saying. I mean, <laughs> listen, man, like I was telling him, I'll be better for you. I'll be better for you all out there, man. For real, man. Like, I ain't, like, I'll be way better for y'all out there, man. Like, but yeah, he was telling. He was telling some of them lies, some of them truth. I really don't know what he was telling. If you tell me, I could tell you, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. I really don't know the whole depth of what he was saying. Yeah, some of them was. He testified today, and he said, I'm trying to get the whole thing. He said there was like 2015 to 2016 and he started coming around and being around OBH. Nah, no, that was a lie. He was coming around in 2010. Well, he said 2010, but he really started like coming around the mansion. Right, he right, he right. Because I guess he was locked up. Yep, okay. Then he said he met uh, Ab around 2010. That's right, Dark Low agrees. Does that sound right? Okay, that's all the way right. So, and that, and he, I guess he meant, he went to the studio once or twice, the Bat Cave. Yeah, I see. I don't know about that. Yeah. See, in 2015, that's when I really started getting sick. Sick? Right. Yeah. Then 2016 was a wrap. I was, 2015, I was sick. I didn't know what was going on. Then when I had went to the hospital and got tubes in my chest that day, I cut everything off. Yeah? But I still kept an ear to the street. Sure, of course. So he said, I guess you told him to come around the mansion? Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, he was just hanging out there like you were like? Yeah, he was just there. Just hanging out, smoking, playing games? Yeah. Um, and it was said, and what did, uh, I wasn't in. I wasn't allowed to. Oh, that's right. The special agent says to the task force agent. I didn't hear any testimony, the task force officer says. So I can't really help out. So he said, he said it was like a decent amount of time that he just kept mm -hmm, hanging around the mansion. Then a big black mark redacted, uh, two big uh, redacted statements. You all right? The special agent asked Dark Low after all this. Yeah, I'm straight. I know we are kind of the bad guys in a lot of this stuff, but we're trying to be respectful. Nah, y'all doing y'all job. You got to talk him across the street, Bill. Yeah, we're about to come over now. Uh, the un un unidentified male comes in. You got to talk to him across the street, Bill. Yeah, we're about to come over now, the special agent replies. Oh, okay, the unidentified male says. Y'all doing your job, man, Dark Low comes back in. Yeah, this is what I don't understand about how y'all took this as a threat. I really don't understand. So then there's some overlapping voices. It seems like maybe the uh, the special agent and the task force officer have something else they need to go do. And there's a bunch of talking going on. But uh, Dark Low comes back in. He says, this is what I don't understand about how y'all took that as a threat. I really don't understand. Under the circumstances, like that's my little relative. Say that was Blood Brother. And I wrote that it would have still been that same type of outcome. Potentially it could have been. 
So Dark Low is saying here, if he was more than a friend, if he was actually his brother, could there have been more of uh, something to come of this? Would uh, him actually being family outweigh the whole threat? And they're going to answer him here. So he says, under the circumstances, like, that's my little relative. Say that was my blood brother, I wrote. Would it have still been the same type of outcome? Potentially, it could have been. If it, if you, if he was testifying against you, some of your best friends, yeah, we see that happen. He was my best friend too. It's not like I don't know this guy. Right, right, right. I knew him. But if your younger brother was testifying against some of your buddies, it, it happens. This are his, these are his rights. Yes. But I'm not a threat. There's no, there's not one threat in that letter. Not a one. Well, unfortunately, you, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to, your baby mama. I didn't say kill. I said effer. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying even if, even if there's not something like that on there. Oh, stuff may be interpreted and, const and construed. You know how it is. If I was to take this to trial, y'all would lose this joint, man. Then the task force officer starts laughing. Dark Low says, for real. Then there's a redacted statement. Dark Low probably started flipping out at the cops, at the, uh, the officer and the agent. Because at the end, it's crazy. He comes in here and he says, if I was to take this to trial, y'all would lose this joint, man. So it looks to me like Dark Low is uh, planning on taking this to trial if they don't come up with some sort of a decent plea agreement. I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, we've got a couple more uh, conversations to cover in this Dark Low interview because Dark Low uh, was arrested November 7th. And then within five days, November 12th, they had two incriminating phone calls that Dark Low had with two uh, unidentified females. So everybody just take a moment, like the video, subscribe to Report Card Radio, follow me on Instagram, MikeyT underscore the movie star, and stay tuned for the next report. I appreciate it, everybody.